Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Today is exciting. We're talking about shoulder rehabilitation, um, and this is important for everybody. Now, the three ignored causes, neurogenic, and this means compromised nerve supply to the nerves that supply the shoulder, and those come out of the cervical spine. Vascular, that means forward head carriage or some type of structural deviation uh, interrupting the flow of blood to and from the joint coming out of the outlet, outlet of the thoracic and mechanical distortions of that thoracic area. Remember, you've got 18 muscles that hold that shoulder girdle on that thoracic cage. And if there's mechanical deviations in the thoracic area, bam, that's going to affect it a big time. Number one, let's start it off with solutions. You have to get a full set of x-rays. This means cervical spine, thoracic spine. And I mean static and stress x-rays to see how the joints are moving. Now, once the cervical spine is starting to be restored, then you can start to restore the labrum that holds that humerus in. And that labrum is an amazing socket that attaches to that scapula. You've got to balance the labrum exercises with the cervical, and we're going to cover those and to get proper supplements and nutrition, eliminate prescription drugs um, that are toxic to tissue regeneration. This includes like the non anti-inflammatories. Deep sleep is when the body regenerates, and once that labrum is fully stabilized, then you can begin stretching exercises. If that labrum is not formed to hold that socket in place, uh, n- n- inappropriate. Now, these are very simple cervical spine exercises. Number one, you can use a towel. You can sit with your your chin and your palms. And this is one of the exercises we give to our kid patients because they're not going to be doing this. And the posture pump, I absolutely love. Now this, you start with your head level with the ground. And you can use anything, a shirt, And the reason you're using this is this provides a pivot point. A lot of people are going to move their shoulder or their neck with their shoulders. And they'll say, no, my neck doesn't hurt at all. And I'm going, yeah, you're not moving your neck. And the neck, once it's traumatized, it starts to lock in. And those are those muscles. Now, the discs of the entire spine get most of their nutrients through movement. And so if you've had a trauma that tightens up the neck muscles and limits the neck muscles, So this exercise alone, isolating that neck, and then you point your chin to the ceiling, like a turtle looking out uh, out of its shell, you don't want to move back completely because that's just extending the lumbar and thoracic. You want to isolate the cervical spine and make sure that you're using some type of thin material. You know, I I built what's called a theracurve, which is just piping, a pipe insulation surrounded by some nylon uh, with a webbing in between. And this just provides a nice pivot point. And we recommend doing about 100 of these a day to rehydrate the discs. It changes the brain's view of the body and restores that cervical spine, which is the arc of life. And this is where all the nerves that supply the shoulder come out of. You cannot do shoulder rehabilitation until you restore the nerves that supply it. Now, this is an excellent exercise, and you could even do this, you know, laying down like my daughter-in-law is doing here, and, and just when you're like this, you want to relax your, your thoracic spine, and deep breathing is going to be the key. So when you're like this, you're breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, and what that does, that breathing increases what's called intrathecal pressure and forces fluid into those discs. This is also an excellent one for children that have had some type of cervical trauma, which can occur during certain birthing practices. But this is excellent. And you're going to be doing this for 5 to 18 minutes so you can get this curve back in there. And you could even do this if you're an office worker and you have a desk. Beautiful. While something's downloading, excellent. Get that curve back in that neck. That curve in the neck is called the arc of life. Posture pump is, again, one of my favorite uh, exercises. I actually worked with Dr. Graham, who invented this for nine years. 
and it does elliptoid decompression. And it's fantastic because you pump it up and relax. You pump it up and relax to hydrate the disc and then pump it up to the extreme amount to, to force that into a, an elliptoid decompression curve. So you're putting equal pressure on all the aspects of that curve. And then also deep breathing. Absolutely fantastic. I do not recommend the posture pump until you get um, good mobility and until you've had static and stress x-rays to make sure that the spine is, is appropriate, that it can function like this. I typically will, will recommend this after we've gotten our first set of post x-rays in with people who have had a reverse curve, loss of curve, or surgery. You've got to restore the motion to make sure that their, their cervical spine can accept this type of force loading. Once you do, oh my God, incredible. Now, the things to not do in shoulder, number one, no end range motion of abduction or extension or flexing on a labrum. What that means is abduction is it's going away from you. Extension is going behind you. Flexion is going here. Because in normal shoulder range of motion, you're static and your, your arm moves out. That's abduction. Now, if you have a distorted labrum, the labrum is going to be draw that shoulder up and then you move out. So this is a distorted labrum abduction. Now, I'm accentuating it. It generally looks more like that instead of just a normal ad abduction. But you've got to reform that labrum. <laughs> Number two, no shoulder rehab without cervical and thoracic correction, which, which that's just basic common sense. You can't choke off the blood supply and nerve supply to an area and then work it. You must, number three, you must correct forward head carriage before the shoulder rehab. And again, working to try and rehab and regenerate a joint with compromised nerve supply or blood supply just does not make sense. Number four, no ice therapy on chronic shoulder injuries. Why? Well, now, number one, inflammation is how the body heals. If you've distorted that labrum, if you have forward head carriage, you're choking off the blood supply and nerve supply to that area. So all the tendons have these bursa sacs around it that should have bursa fluid. The joint itself is hydraulic. It needs fluid in there. And if there's a dehydration because of forward head carriage or some type of altered vascular um, supply, then the joint desiccates or dries up. Now, if you put moist heat on there, you're going to increase the blood supply. It's also going to increase inflammation, which inflammation is the healing process of the body. So no ice on the shoulder, unless it's a, a, an acute injury, beautiful, put ice on it first for the first 12 to 20, 24 hours, but ice goes through cold, achy, burning, numb. Once it's numb, then you take the ice off because you can damage the, the tissue. And moist heat is the best thing. And number five, eliminate the prescription drugs that reduce the body's ability to heal. And when you look at non anti-inflammatories, the most common drug prescribed, it limits the proteoglycan production of the body. That's the building block of cartilage. And it decreases inflammation chemically so that means an inflammation is how the body regenerates. This is the craziest exercise ever. Now, remember that labrum holds that humerus in place. And if it's distorted and you run it, because you've got four muscles that hold that, that, uh, that humerus in that socket. If any of those muscles are weak, the deltade takes over and has its superior subluxation or distorts that labrum in an upward position. So if you're going to be stretching it by extending it, you're also damaging that labrum further. So you need to make sure that labrum is reformed before you do extreme range of motion like this. And the picture on the left is just insane. He's putting his head forward and moving this back. I just, just I mean, there, there's no thought process of of what the normal shoulder is now internally rotated humerus assessment again this is huge to look at the muscles on the front and their agonist muscles on the back and antagonist and agonist muscles so they're 
their opposing muscles. Now, the glenohumeral joint may not be subluxated or unstable, but internally, um, because of the asymmetry of muscles. Now, they stand in front of the patient. This is an easy assessment. Have the patient relax their hands by your side, by their side, and in a normal presentation, you should see the thumbs. If you see the back of their hands, it means the muscles on the front, their chest, is, is too strong in relationship. And this is excellent. So when you have somebody standing there relaxed, um, beautiful, you're looking at the thumbs. If you see the back of their hands, it means the pec muscles are, are uh, there's an imbalance. And so in this, if this person on the right that has an internally rotated humerus, um, as long as you've checked the cervical spine, thoracic spine, made sure that labrum's stable, then they can do rowing exercises to increase those back muscles to, to derotate out the pecs. And, and that, that's going to make a huge difference. Now, have the person stand perpendicular to the wall, about three to four inches away, and put their palm on the wall behind them. The arm should be straight and level with the waist, and they take a step forward with the same arm that's on that wall. And, and what I mean by that, you're getting a slight stretch of the pec, and you hold it for about a minute to two minutes, three to four times a day, and the patient can assess their progress just by relaxing the arms and looking in the mirror. So just stretching that pec out will make a huge difference. But again, I would not recommend doing this with an unstable labrum. Now, if there's no pain on abduction, when the patient moves their arm to 90 degrees, um, that's an indicator that maybe the labrum's stable. But if that patient, okay, moves their arm to 90 degrees and it hurts, this is a massive indicator that there is some unstable structures in that joint. And that's why a loose rotator cuff will cause that deltoid to distort that labrum in a superior position. Now, it's important to stabilize the shoulder, reshape. That means you've got to completely restore the function and stability of that glenohumeral joint. Now, the exercise, this exercise is designed to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles as well as the ligaments of the shoulder and reshape the labrum. What you're going to do, you have the patient stand with their arms by their side straight down, um, chin up, palms forward, holding between a 5 to 20 pound weight. And, and you'll be able to tell. What I'll do with my patients is I'll grab their hand and pull it down. And when I feel that shoulder joint start to gap, then I know that's a sufficient amount. My shoulders are, are on the larger side, so I would use a 20-pound weight to drop it down. My 100-pound my wife will use about a 5 to 8-pound. She's pretty muscular too. Okay, and just you've got to have enough weight to open that joint. And then the patients will move the arms um, in a, like, a, like a grandfather clock. And, and that's when I tell patients because this is a ligamentous-based exercise. And so you shouldn't go further than the, the abdomen and going back no further than the gluteal region. I say butt to belly, butt to belly, in, in a fashion kind of like a grandfather clock, where you're going, and that is amazing. So what this looks like, and I'm putting a weight in this hand, have the hand forward, palm forward, what you don't want to do is hand the weight to a person with their, them outstretching their arm. Because that labrum, again, as soon as they move it away from their body, that shoulder is going to distort. So I have the patient stand, chin in the air, palms forward, and I put it in and curl their fingers around it. And they're going to do both, both shoulders, always, always, never one at a time. And you want to have them move symmetrically um, forward and back butt to belly, butt to belly, alternating. And this cross-crawl aspect will also help that brain get better awareness of that because that brain gets so much sensory input from all the sensors in every joint. And I mean sensors in the wrist, in the elbow, in the shoulder, lots of uh, mechanoreceptors in there that send signals up to the brain. And this will help that brain rehab because that central nervous system is everything. Now, you've got to have the patient use weights on the affected arm and the unaffected arm um, because you can have 
uh, a one arm symptom, but never a one arm problem. And it's a very, very gentle, very, very gentle. And when you're doing this, it helps distract the humerus, pulls it from the position from the anterior the superior back into the socket. And the combination of this movement with the palms facing forward helps rehab everything. Now, you want to do this um, one to two times a day for about five to 10 minutes. Because remember, it's a ligamentous based exercise. Now, you keep their chin elevated is hugely important. You've got to make sure that the nerve supply to that area is opened up. Now, any forward head carriage will distort the blood supply and nerve supply. So you've got to make sure that chin is up, head is in position in line with the shoulder joint. Now, by doing this exercise, the patient will see an increase in shoulder stability. We're talking quick, like one to six weeks at the most, because as long as you're restoring the blood supply and nerve supply, you're working with living tissue and it will rehab quickly. And then once it's there, beautiful, then you can do the full range of motions. I, I got to show you this, this one gal, um, Beverly, she, one of my most favorite, most, I, I, I loved her. Uh, she's gone on to heaven, um, just a few years ago, but she is just a doll. But looking at her spine, when I was working on her, she was 88 years old. And in 1979, she was hit by a car and had a leg amputated. So this means that, that she had to use her arms to get around. Now, if you look at the neck here, her cervical spine had a reversal of the curve in the neck. And that means that she actually tore a ligament. So having the forward head carriage of 45 millimeters, reverse curve in the neck, and then a significant structural deviation. Um, could she get better? Absolutely. And here she is. I, uh, I'm going to love her as long as my heart keeps beating. She's just one of the most beautiful, amazing patients ever. Yeah, it, it's just, you can, you can see the, the soul smiles when I see her. So, so when you look at this, and that is, is a patient who is older than the average, with significant trauma, and she was still able to regain full range of motion. So when, when people say, well, what's my potential of recovery? It's always 100%. The, doctor, the job of a doctor is not to judge. It's to do the best job that they can, knowing that your body is made in the image and likeness of God, that you have nothing but living tissue in this structure, and that that living tissue will remodel the force loading. But what do you need? You need five things to regenerate your body. Proper nerve supply, especially important when you're looking at the shoulder. Regular exercise. This means the ligamentous-based exercises first to correct any damage, particularly of the distorted labrums. Proper nutrition. You got to get the nutrients in the system so you can do it. That's why I recommend everybody have a diet like their great-great-grandparents. <laughs> Healthy, organic, seasonal, varied, has free from preservatives and if is preserved. You've got good, healthy bacteria or fermented foods. Sleep is when the body regenerates. You've got to get the deep sleep. This means not chemically induced sleep. I'm talking, look at our sleep restriction videos. And then prayer and meditation. Every study, every study involving prayer shows healing occurs faster. And it's, it's, plus it's really fun to have a relationship with your creator. It really is. I talk to him every day. So now post your questions below this. And I'll get to the questions and responses as quick as we can. God bless you all. Stay healthy, my friends.